Okay, welcome back from the break that we had. Um, I'll jump right in. Our next author is another Ahab favorite. My first encounter with him was at a reading he was a part of in Berlin. And the word that comes to mind then and still now when you hear him is read is affecting. He uses words in a ways that are quite novel to me. And just being near him, I'm always learning something new because of his intelligence. So Pavel Yankovic, born in 1982, is a writer from, I'm going to butcher this, Shiraz, sure, okay, Poland, living and working in Berlin. He finished law studies in Gdansk and Lutz with work on art scandals and their normative entanglements. Since then, aware of the tension between the artistic ethos and the legal sanction, his writing investigates the border between the official and the unofficial. He's been engaged in numerous collaborations from local literary circles, through the street art milieu of Noriaki, galleries PR 145, psychoanalytical groups El La Lab, residencies with the CKU, and with individual artist Michael Hazel. He published in literary magazines such as Tao, academic publishings with Springer, and within the platforms for political thought. This is another one, Resnolista. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. He puts a special emphasis on the anonymous, um, indistinct urban space. Politically active and taking sides, he's a supporter of the pan-European democracy with DEM25 and is a member of the district board of a Polish Ratsim in Berlin. Please give a warm welcome to Pavel. Thank you. Um, I, didn't, I didn't plan to um, make any introduction, I just wanted to read the text, uh, but um, since uh, Luby mentioned the political engagement, uh, this one I would like to dedicate to the Polish feminists, um, the Polish Constitutional Tribunal um, announced yesterday that the uh, de facto abortion ban in Poland and some women in Poland that nonetheless would like to live their uh, individual lives the way they would like them to be. Um, well, probably are beaten by the police uh, um, this very moment, the moment that I will speak. Um, Impromptu z rzęsom i krzesłem. Zarastało rzęso, sukienki, miały puste krzesło, pianissimo. Wtedy wszystko nie na miejscu. Zarasta powieką sukienki, mijają drzewa, domysły, listą. Um, that was June 2012. And now something um, October 2020. Vicissitudes of the failed writer. I'm a failed writer. That is to say, I write, though what comes out of it is flawed. It goes nowhere and slides like the mind and body of a boxer stuck fast in the cloakroom after a lost fight. Still hearing, now a distant cheer, now blood beating in his temples. For I cannot stop it, this dabbling in text. There, in the mud of words, I don't even look for anything like literature. Not anymore. I find my consolation in objects, something firm I sometimes manage to pull out, flapping with gills sometimes. I found myself an apartment that is equally failed. The bathroom has a loose tap, loose and broken tiles. The wall sweats with paint dripping into my bath, crackling inside after drying out. 
when brushing my teeth in this crooked and tight space, I see things getting formatted in a way I am ready to accept as true. Recently, I started to take notes in the bathtub, take, talking to the dictaphone. When I played afterwards, I can hear the splashes. I can almost hear the foam popping and the dirt building up between the cracked tiles and the white dust raising from the walls. Words derail themselves and they derail each other. They end up alien to their own nature, broken, unable to signify what they formerly did. And session by session, the failed writer produces failed tracks, leading to non-destinations. Matt in the sun of indifference, cancer of a shrine in the midst of a desert, a crossroads, trying to capture the loose sand of time as the first cities have tried. Here he is now, numbly rolling a pencil along the table. An empty page gets whiter and whiter. His thoughts blank themselves out. Then suddenly, a doodle. Then an inscription. Busy ironing. The smell of a hot textile on the ironing board the clink of a spoon on the espresso saucer. It happens they seem so worthy, and I do put them down. They are my life's inner limits where it opens to madness. I work in gastronomy. I know full well that dizzying attraction the edge of a sharpened knife has. It would often draw the touch of my fingers, leaving cats almost willful. And thus I write without purpose. Years of gastronomy to feed my deficiency. And now that pandemic seems to be shutting the whole branch, each hour spent behind the counter turns into a jewel. Just when I finally learned to perform the much of the writing. First, there are those white paper cups if it's quiet in the restaurant, my task is to stamp them with the name of the business. It says, Becquerin, like a Essen manufacture. And the address, Morstrasse 3, 10587, Berlin. The ink is of a shiny black, almost emerald hue, like of a scarab beetle and this very much prosaic placing of an apparently prosaic print is unbelievably beautiful, various and mysterious after the tenth or so cup. For it is obvious to me that it wasn't entirely deprived of a spiritual striving, and hence, as if suspended in thin air, the original decision to have those cups white and stamped to give it a sign which apparently is made of words, forming phrases, but which is very much a border entity still, not even an image, but a thing, feeding on instances. And I try to insert myself in the suspension it betrays, the invisible gap where it took off. Then, I've realized that if I only tightened a certain focus within me, more often than not, a strange constellation would present itself during the shift. An immemorial dream coming to mock me, but indeed only to fall into the net of my most passive memory. The repetition and monotony of my gestures stretch out the staff to tangle notes of some subtlety and land on a page of the waitress' pad. Still, these notations are like a greasy fingerprint on a book, on one of those pages inten intentionally left blank. And books, they're always written by someone else. 
I'm a failed writer because I failed to subject myself to a book. Not that I didn't try, I tried and failed. And now I'm broken and broke, lying on the floor under the table, having a wall as the horizon. My, while my little pump engine still spills the ink. Where does my text go if it goes nowhere? For nowhere always shows through somewhere. It pops up like a boil in the most embarrassing of places. It's pretty clear south of Grand Alle, where I live. Here, it is an intimate knowledge. It haunts long before it turns into flesh. This landscape of car tunnels, of dingy facades with barren graffiti, where stickers on the signpost lose their abstractness to suddenly speak only the football theme. I call this nowhere a field. This field is at once a landscape of an explosion taking place, maybe for a minute, but maybe a thousand years now. Though I am not so certain about its vector, more and more I suspect it to be an implosion caused by a human crack, who, like a suicide bomber, planted himself under the bland success story of a big city and maybe a deeper under the language itself. Paris was very important to him. I've heard once a claim from Nadine Hem in a documentary about Francis Bacon. In Paris, she went on to say, we would go to restaurants and then nightclubs. That's where we met, and he really wanted to get to know Andy Warhol all the painters and writers were there. And it struck me, if this could possibly be true. Surely not all the writers were there, but who knows? What can I know about that? I was in some clubs and restaurants before. I've spent a chunk of my life there, but I was the one who was serving. Was that what she had in mind? And if not, and all the writers and painters are now getting served in the clubs of Paris, of Berlin, what does it make of me, this fact? It means I'm a failed writer. I have some desire in gastronomy, though I guess not in the way she meant. But I quit my job again, because gastronomy is wobbly and I realize this threatens my writing. And I feel like a mother these days. I look around where to escape with my children. But I am frightened that I am a failed mother at that and that I escaped nowhere. I'm worrying as much as I'm wary. I remember the last cappuccino I made in that restaurant I remember it because I had this thought at the moment that it might be my last one. Well, it didn't come out great, the milk. There always arrives, I presume, the instant when the maker knows it is time to withdraw, that the grip is loosening, that death is not indifferent towards us. Gastronomy or not, one still needs to eat. A few days ago, I had my first spaghetti in my new empty apartment. One can barely stand in the kitchen, it's so small, so I took it to the living room where I fixed a huge table from an unvarnished board taped to the trestles. The pan with the stand took place on the side of the fair tabletop on its virgin surface smelling of sawdust. And the person I parted my ways with that evening forked one saucy bit out of it and carried it all along to her plate. I still see those stains today. The pretty orange, the yellow ellipses form a pretty pattern. 
Recently, I got the idea of removing those stains with saliva. I gently rub in the enzymes with the tip of my index finger, then harder with the tip of my thumb. These faded stains, this attempt to remove them, this is the failed writing. A raw shark test where my heart continues to bleed. And I reread those stains over and over, being at last its first profound reader. The saliva runs deep. Thank you. Thank you, Pavel, for that uh, really... I was there with you. Is that new? Recent? Re Can only... Yeah, I am still there. Um, we're going to have to take a break because due to um, the headache of possible copyright uh, infringement, we, um, Jonas Hartman, will not read the live stream, so that means, unfortunately, for the live stream audience, you don't get to hear him, but for us, we do, which I'm very happy. So, yeah, we take a break for the live stream.